आफ्टरनून एवरी वन दिस इज शेताली बाग चीफ ऑफ यूरो विद एवियशन एंड डिफेंस यूनिवर्स रिपोर्टिंग लाइव फ्रॉम ई एम रो एंड करेंटली आई एम स्टैंडिंग विद कर्नल के वी कुबेर इंडियन आर्मी वेटरन हु इज द डायरेक्टर फॉर एयर स्पेस एंड डिफेंस विद अर्नस्ट एंड यंग थैंक यू सो मच फॉर बींग विद अस हियर सर कर्नल कुबेर वॉज द मॉडरेटर फॉर द फर्स्ट पैनल दैट हैपन हियर एंड अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग पैनल वेर देर वॉज अ कन्वर्जेंस ऑफ द इंडियन मिलिट्री विद द एम आर ओ इंडस्ट्री now uh, sir uh, well civil mro and military mro there was something which was very much talked about in the panel and there has been a con- constant uh, uh, not rivalry but a constant t- uh, tying up between these two so i would like to know more um, how how are we planning how the indian government and the mro industry is planning to sub- uh, uh, lower down this tip and make it in a parallel go see i don't know what the government will do and i don't think it is the job of the government to do it to my mind um what really should happen is like i was talking to you about the convergence happens at the systems level not at the platform level at the platform level you will find that you know there is a rafael or there is a jaguar or there is a so there are different types of aircrafts that we have but the systems that go into them are pretty pretty similar and if not the same so every aircraft will require a number of communication systems uh, radar systems electrical systems wires harnesses and uh, and therefore i think um, the real convergence takes place at the systems level and and therefore what i would uh, like to see the industry doing is when they do this convergence for example the adanis have set up a state of art uh, manufacturing facility yeah. in uh, in mihan uh, mro facility in mihan and they have already uh, taken over air air, air works and uh, now you see when they actually do the uh, systems and when they they they, they also have a, a state of art uh, facility in uh, in in mundra and therefore you will find that the synergy actually happens at that level and then uh, we can have a holistic type of an mro which can come up in the country so uh, another thing we, you talked about the war and its effect on the mro industry i mean it was very brief but can you please uh, tell us more about it I and mean, what, what exactly has been the war effect on this mro industry in india right now so the war effect on mro industry has uh, been i would say uh, phenomenal so for example when you are at war that's the time the denial regime kicks in and when a denial regime kicks in you got to live with what you have and and uh, there could be occasions um, where uh, somebody will not give us the spares of a particular platform that we we are using yeah. and therefore it's incumbent upon us to make sure that we are capable of uh, keeping it running whatever we have at that point in time and therefore you see today uh, if you look over your shoulders and wait for somebody else to come and do the mro for you i think uh, you would be uh, you would be putting so many lives at risk you would be putting so many machines out of work and and therefore that you will increase the inefficiency in the long run exactly so um, here i would like to ask the war specific the russian ukraine war how much it has affected the indian mro industry so indian mro has been affected attitudinally i won't say in terms of uh, quantum physical quantum there is an effect because we are operating different types of systems whether it is land systems whether it is terrain or air uh, our platforms are uh, very much varied and very different it is more on the civil side or the military uh, on the civil side it really doesn't matter because you know we are we are dealing with the large oems of the world so on the civil side really speaking i don't think much uh, effect will be there mm-hmm. but effect in terms of raw materials effect in terms of uh, uh, a, a, you know the cost of raw materials increased tremendously and today you see we are so rich in rare earth materials we are rich in so many uh, so much so we have to put all that together and see that uh, uh, we bring down the cost the cost would always increase in such a situation so you actually opened up pandora's box when you talked about the funding here and i could see when i was coming out with you 
many of the people that they want to ask you more about the funding know more about the funding so through our channel would you like to tell us more about it oh yes there is this company called angus um, which is based out of bangalore and uh, they are having a grand plan to bring about uh, a manufacturer business jet in this country uh, i've seen this business jet in action i mean displayed in the aero india um, both the Aero India's, the Aero India year before last and this Aero India. Yeah. And uh, they have also acquired some land in the UP corridor. They are having some tie-up with uh, HAL Kanpur. Mm -hmm. They are, uh, they have already established a type of supply chain. They know where they are getting their engines from. They have their drawings almost finalized. And I think uh, uh, it's only a question of uh, how we can um, strengthen them through funding those now they will actually create the prototype they'll start manufacturing they'll go for certifications they will do wind tunnel tests and they will all this cost money till now you know they have been working frugal they have been working free of cost i mean the uh, the founders and uh, a lot of engineers have been working but now is the time when you go for testing of equipment and all that a lot of money will go and we are looking at something like 400 million dollars Right. Great. Thank you so much for your time, sir. And as uh, Vaibhav had said and Praveen had said, you were an excellent moderator. Thank it you. was lovely listening to you. The questions that you put on the panel, they were lo they were really great and they really enhanced. Even the panelists, they could speak more on it. Thank you so much for your time, sir. And lovely meeting you. Thanks.